सहनावतु सहनौ भुनक्त सह वीरकवाह तेजस्वीतमस्तु मद्विषा ओ शाशाशाति गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेशर गुरुरेव परम ब्रह्मा तस्म श्रीगुरव नम तस्म श्रीगुरव नम वी आर इन द थर्ड अनुवाक ऑफ रुद्रम just by the mere chanting of it it looks pretty intriguing as to the different forms and formats in which the lord is invoked and worshiped here the specific form invoked and worshiped is the form of lord shiva and we have seen the lagunyasa and the first Two and a half ish uh, anuvaka. Each paragraph is a set of thoughts called mantra, and it can be called as the anuvaka as well. So, in this third anuvaka, <coughs> those of you who can chant, uh, you can chant along with me. I'll be chanting the entire. third anuvaka so you can uh, chant along and then we'll go line by line which we will start explaining namas sahamanaya nivyadhina avyadhini nam pataye namo nama ककुभाय निषंगिणे स्तेना पतये नमो नमो निषंगिण इशुधिमते तस्कण पतये नमो नमो वंचते परिवंचते स्थूना पतये नमो नमो निचेरवे परिचरायारण्या पतये नमो नम सृकाभ्यो जिगागम सद्यो मुष्णता पतये नमो नमो सिमध्यो नक्तरभ्य प्रकृता पतये नमो नम उशिने गिरीचराय कुलुंचा पतये नमो नम इशुम्यो धन्वाभ्य वो नमो नम आतन्वानेभ्य प्रतिदानेभ्य वो नमो नम आयछद्यो विसृज्य वो नमो नमोस्यो विद्यभ्य वो नमो नम आसीनेभ्य शयानेभ्य वो नमो नम स्वप्यो जाग्रद्य वो नमो नमस्तिष्ठ्यो धाव्य वो नमो नम सभाभ्य सभापति वो नमो नमो अश्वेभ्यो श्वपति वो नम इफ आई एम नॉट रॉन्ग वी हैव सीन टिल नमो असीमध्यो नक्तरभ्य प्रकृता पतये नमो ओनली टिल देर वी हैव डन ओके सो माय मेमोरी फेल्ड सो द द प्रीवियस वन नम सृका विभ्यो जिगागम सद्यो मुष्णता पतये नम 
So, today we will start with the next one. So, repeat after me. Chigagam Sadhya also. harm in going over it again. <clears throat> okay, repeat after me. Namasra ka vibhyo Jigagam sadhyo Mushnatam Pataye namo <clears throat> the dual namaskara continues. Wherein in the beginning of the mantra and the end of the mantra, namaha is being used. It can mean many things. One thing definitely is when we are in hyper desperation mode. So, in our prayers, our salutations, uh, the namaskara gets that much more. When we are desperate, we visit that many more temples, that many more various things that we end up doing. So, namaha can mean that. At the same time, it can also mean the depth of the depth of intensity the, of the devotion of the devotee towards the Lord. Like in the Bhagavad Gita, like in Bhagavad Gita, in the 11th chapter, once Arjuna understands the great grand glory of the Lord through the Vishwarupa Darshana, he is so awestruck, dumbfounded, that he has no words. And that is when he realizes that, oh my God, this is really God. That Paramatma that I have been hearing about, he is standing right in front of me. Tears are like flowing constantly. And his whole body is in, uh, you know, the horpulations all over. And he is feeling that shiver within. Not fear, but just a shiver within. Kampana. And his voice is breaking up. And this is like within Bhagavad Gita, this is the second time the stream of uh, tears are flowing in Arjuna. One born out of confusion and desperation, the other one of the satiation of or the completion of seeing the Lord in his divine glory. He says, what can I offer to you? When you are happy, you want to give something. At that absolute moment of happiness, Arjuna has nothing with him to give. Or let me put it this way. Even if he had something to give, what could he give, it, give to that Lord who has created everything that he owns or he calls that he owns? So, in that moment of realization or understanding, he just says, all that I can offer, O Lord, is namo namaha sahasra krutvaha that I offer myself in salutations to you infinite number of times. Sahasra doesn't mean that he did, did the uh, thousand count. He was not doing an exercise pattern. He was, he, he just felt that you know whatever you end up doing, it still falls short in trying to give and reach to that Lord. So, here the second mode is where I would like to understand that, O oh Lord, that may my devotion be so overpowering unto you 
that you know namaha namaha everywhere namaha srika vibhyo srika vibhyo the one who is the lord the lord who is holding um, the weapons <coughs> or the second meaning of it could be the one who is protecting or who is in the form of those who are protecting themselves with weapons sirkavi will come to the uh, word meaning i mean the intern uh, meaning uh, little later jigagam sadbhyo jigagam sadbhyo the one who is the lord of those who are desirous of destroying others very strange pattern of meanings right the first time i went through this my jaw dropped like what exactly is the meaning behind all these mushnatam pataye namaha those who steal from the fields to the lord of those to that shiva my salutations my humble prostrations so salutations to the one who is the lord of those who are protecting themselves with weapons those who are desirous of destroying others and the lord who is uh, the lord of those who steal grains or fruits from others fields i think we have done this because i remember a certain no 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 i went through the meaning part because i remember very distinctly the example that i had given srika srika means vajra vajra the vajra ayudha of indra srikavi <coughs> srikavi means the one who holds that or the one who wields that srikavi sirka vibhya means those who want to protect themselves with this uh, very powerful weapon in their hand and the jigagam sadhya to the lord to the thieves who kill without reason now these two meanings when they are brought together actually all three words have to be put together to give a, a cognizable meaning our body in itself is the field through which we perform both dharma and adharma various kinds of acts that we do which ends up being dharmic or adharmic and in the field of dharma and adharma there cannot be shades of it either it is dharma or it is not we may want to justify ourselves with various reasons and that is purely our justification in the field of dharma i mean it is like light and darkness that where there is light there cannot be darkness and that where there is darkness you cannot claim there to be light asatoma sadgamaya either it is asat or sat not in between so with this dharma and adharma when we perform different actions the standpoint or the standards that we have for ourselves and for with those that we interact with there seems to be a dual standpoint when i am dealing with others i expect that everything has to be pure black and white but when i deal with myself or when i want myself to be dealt by the world around me i want them to as they say cut me some slack some shades of in between dharma and adharma so
so through this body we perform this is the field and we perform various acts of dharma and adharma and who is the lord of this body this field the lord of this field is the chetana tattva or chaitanya tattva that is ishvara himself now as the sadhaka as the seeker constantly keeps putting effort between papa and punya they are two never ending undrying pots as somebody put it very beautifully in telugu he says tegadu papamu teeradu punyam which literally means that the papa or the cycle of that papa cannot be cut asunder punya cannot be so overwhelmingly gained that it can flush out the entire papa layer so it always becomes somewhere in between a mediocre effort a mixture of both of these now what does the lord do he takes the form or he expresses himself in the sadhaka in the form of viveka buddhi like in bhagavad gita he says dadami buddhi yogam tam yena mam upayantite says, those who worship me what do they get that is the first boon that they get it is not something of a asset or a luxury that you will get that that which is already been given unto you you are reconnected to that you are all born with buddhi buddhi the intellect the sense of right or wrong the discriminatory power so what does he do he reconnects presently how is it either disconnected or it is short circuited now it has to be recircuited reconnected dadami buddhi yogantam with this viveka buddhi what is the highest that can be achieved like in upadesha sara ramana maharshi puts it in the very last shloka he says aham apetakam nija vichana महदिदम तपः रमण वागियम अहमपेतकम द एनिहिलेशन ऑफ दैट अहंकार द ईगो इज द ग्रेटेस्ट बेनिफिट ऑफ हैविंग दिस विवेक बुद्धि विवेक बुद्धि कैन स्टार्ट फ्रॉम एनी स्टैंड पॉइंट एज स्थूल एज इट कैन बी टू से दैट दिस इज द लेक्टर्न एंड दिस इज द a jag or a a thermos viveka buddhi when i am thirsty i don't lift this i lift this viveka buddhi when i am cold i wear some warm clothes viveka buddhi when i am hot i sit in front of the whatever the fan or the ac or whatever it takes whatever is available विवेक बुद्धि यू गेट दीज कप केक्स यूजली इट कम्स विथ अ कप रैप टू ईट दी केक विदउट द कप विवेक बुद्धि आई रिमेंबर was the donkeys or the other animals they eat the paper also right <coughs> so i remember once i was in village i must have done something stupid something naughty something mischievous and my grandfather scolds me it literally translates to as gade ke aulad instead of feeling sad or bad 
it's i don't remember this i don't recollect this part of memory i am told that i went around the entire village stating that my father eats paper the animal doesn't have that kind of it doesn't see that layer of difference and it eats both whereas for us the cupcake is given you eat the cake and leave the wrap the cup sthula even in sthula you can understand that viveka but what is the height of that having that viveka buddhi is to understand and see out at every single layer of interaction the presence of this ego and annihilate it that is the depth of uh, that, that that depth of uh, uh, understanding and discrimination of the intellect is the lord who comes annihilating that which mercilessly becomes the jigagam sadhya jigagam sadhya the ego who wants to win at every case at every in instance there is no giving in there is no letting it away however it be i have to have my last word my last say my way is the way and earlier there was this students the children would say my way or the highway now the new thing in is my way or no way it has to always be mine it has to always be that ego which has to and it keeps snatching away everybody's opportunity just so that it can survive jigagam sadhya so mushnatam is that field field i have explained is the body through which we perform the dharma and adharma and that ego if not annihilated becomes the mushnatam and then it becomes the srikavi in order to sustain itself it you know, the kinds of schemes plans and uh, things that it goes into in fact it is the ishvara alone who can annihilate that ego nobody else can annihilate that ego and it is his divinity expressing through the buddhi as viveka buddhi now with that viveka buddhi it has to raise to that gnana vritti if that viveka buddhi does not give rise to that gnana vritti that mahavakyopadesha gnana vritti if not entertained by that viveka having that sharp mind or sharp intellect and not using it is as good as misusing it or abusing it like you have something of great power and you are going through utter poverty and somebody comes and asks you have such great immense power why don't you use it i am saving it for the rainy day if we, if we save our buddhi for the rainy day that shows lack of discrimination right there so that buddhi has to be used until we reach to that highest state of gnana vritti again this gnana vritti is not a state wherein you are repeating the thought again and again there is a huge difference between the mantra japa and the aham vritti aham vritti or the vritti of consciousness to be maintained that i am the conscious principle behind all these movements the intensity with which we can maintain that one thought it's not thought repetition 
So that jnana vritti has to be gained. Sirkavi, another meaning of it is this jigagam sadhyaha and the mushnatam, the one who is through the field expressing out to grab everything out into the world and becoming worldly. Sirkavi, a powerful weapon. And with that powerful weapon, what is a powerful weapon? Jnanena is one powerful weapon. Asanga Shastrena with complete detachment and dispassion. Cut that Ajnana, Vasana, Jiva, Dharma, Adharma, everything aside. To such Lord Shiva who is that Sirkavi, who <coughs> functions through this body as Dharma and Adharma and with that Jnana Vritti cuts asunder the limitations of existence called ego. To such Lord Shiva, my salutations again and again. <clears throat> the reason I remember having done this particular part of mantra is last time, Mushnatam, I said I was also guilty of being one such. Because growing up back in India, you know, Mushnata means somebody who steals the fruits or grains or uh, things like that from others. So when we would go to the village, uh, one of the toughest trees to climb is the coconut, it is a difficult one. A couple of us cousins, we had mastered it. So with a long nail as our tool in our pocket, we would climb up those trees. And if you have seen the coconut you know, the, with the shell, on the top there are three holes. Usually the coconut has three phases to it, three sides to it. So right where they converge, there are three holes. One of those holes is very tender. So we would go with a nail and a straw. Sitting there up on the tree, we would have emptied about 15-20 coconuts. The poor fellow, the owner would keep thinking that you know, the coconuts are there, but one fine day they are all rotten, falling off. Something, some kind of a bug, some kind of a pest is attacking these coconuts. Little did they know that it was their neighbor's grandchildren <laughs> that were the pests. Or, you know, growing up in certain places, you know, there are these pomegranate, the best of the varieties. What today can be branded as? Uh, organic, uh, non-genetically uh, modified, pure manure, pure breed. So this lady in our neighborhood used to have one such huge, it was not a shrub, it was a huge tree, a gigantic size. And every season she would have about, uh, you know, the entire branch full of pomegranates and you know the nazar, uh, the evil eye. So to avoid that she would tie a, a plastic cover to it. And also to avoid all these birds pecking on it, she would tie the uh, plastic wrap on it, cover on it. So that would give us the indication that it is time for us to invade. So couple of seasons it happened that way. And then uh, suddenly she started uh, you know, growing, I mean, having a pet, an Alsatian, a really huge dog. Usually we could handle it by you know, feeding it on one side while we keep plucking it and then make away with it. So that day it refused to eat. And as we got onto, I got onto the tree and uh, 
it was right there standing. Finally, somehow managed to draw its attention somewhere else, jumped the fence and the fence had a barbed wire and almost made it across. I still have it here on this left part, a huge scar, but whatever. Those pomegranates were the tastiest. Mushnatam. <coughs> so, we are not talking about just the heat at this gross level, but that Mushnata, that field of crop of dharma and adharma, of course, what this was done was also adharma only, but on a larger scale, the adharma or dharma that which is being nourished through this body and field of actions can be cut asunder by that sirkavi with the jnana vritti and detachment, knowledge and detachment. To such Lord Shiva who inspires within each one of us with that viveka buddhi, my salutations again and again. Moving forward, repeat after me the next mantra. <coughs> Namo se madhyo, prakranta nam. Pataye namo Asi madhyaha Asi Asi khadga dharinaha The one who those who carry the khadga or sword Naktan charadhyaha of those who are nocturnal nightly creatures or nightingales <laughs> of those who uh, are nocturnal. <coughs> Prakrantanam, Prakrantanam, those who <coughs> rob others by forceful methods, Prakrantanam, Pataye Namaha, salutations to the Lord of those who carry sword those who are nocturnal and those who rob by brutal force. Asimadhyaha, Asimadhyaha, the one who carry the swords. Naktancharadhyaha, Naktancharadhyaha, those who uh, use the, uh, the night as their uh, protection to rob others. They usually come with all these, you know, the, the oily black stuff that they put across and uh, they stealthily come and uh, before you realize things are all cleaned up. Once <coughs> a long, long time ago, we are going through the uh, western ghats. No, some ghat section after you cross Palani, you are familiar? Okay, so two Tamilians that are here, okay, the third one, okay, the third one also. So, we were on a summer trip, you know, my dad and couple of their family, friends and others, uh, joined and we had stopped in Parani and after having had the darshan, <coughs> you know we were all in one bus and all our uh, luggages were tied up on the vehicle and for some reason the driver kept complaining that something is wrong with this vehicle, it is not picking up even in first gear. Usually when going gets, they put it in a lower gear and it should start moving. 
So, something is wrong, this vehicle is acting really weird. And it is a ghat section, so it was going on an uphill and suddenly we hear a, a huge thud and uh, my father looked at and he recognized that it was our piece of luggage, not a luggage, but our piece of luggage. So, he immediately asked the driver to stop and then he ran to fetch it thinking that it must have snapped and fallen. Uh, as he reached for it, <coughs> there were people waiting in the trees with these poisonous stones, they started pelting and uh, bravely he just you know grabbed that uh, suitcase or whatever it was, made it in to the vehicle. As he was coming in, he realized he saw on the top the ropes were all cut and this was the only last piece of luggage, rest of the luggage was gone. <coughs> the driver bravely made it across, straight went into the next town to the police station uh, to complain and the police seems to have known this kind of episodes for a while. <coughs> And the inspector sitting there, he very clearly said, your uh, exhaust muffle, you know, check it, it must have couple of banana stuffed in. You know, when you stuff it and it gets clogged, so the, the going gets, I, the inspector was saying, that, I am even surprised that you could make it this far and the vehicle did not fail you. <coughs> so, his description was that Naktan Charadhyaha, as soon as there is a night, so these people will, will have already marked the vehicle as a target. They have already picked up all the information as to which route, what vehicle, how many number of passengers, how much, you know, how many suitcases and they would plan it in such a way that all the suitcases that were thrown, not a single one of them made sound. Can you imagine the skill? And the last one was thrown down making a sound, so that we would stop our vehicle and they would barge in and take the other valuables that are inside being carried. Very systematically planned. Such people are called Naktan Charadhyaya nocturnal, prakrantanam, prakrantanam uh, those who rob with brutal force. So, they say when you are at a gun point, do not try to be brave, just give what they ask and get out of that place. Why? And they can end up doing anything stupid. And they do not mind using that kind of brutal force, which can end up into a eventuality, a casualty. Asimadhyaha. Asimadhyaha is the similar meaning like Srikavibhyaha. Now, <coughs> getting into the deeper meaning. What is the Naktam? Naktam? Ratri. Ratri is our Avidya is the Ratri. In I think it is the second shloka of Guru Stotram we chant it, right? Agnana Timira Andhakara, that Agnana, that Avidya is the Ratri. And if Agnana or Avidya is the root cause of all our problems, what should be the method to remove that Agnana? If you understand what the problem is, the solution applied should be appropriate. 
I keep often making this statement again and again just so that it can sink in well, not to bore you, but even if it bores you, listen to it. Now the example, if this room were dark, do I need to make it dark to make this example stand out? If this room were dark, how do you bring in light into this room? How do you remove that darkness? Switch the light on. If somebody says that, let me use a powerful vacuum, let me suck all the uh, darkness out, will it work? If Agnana is the root cause, applying any other method which will not give rise to this Jnana, what good is that method? Avidya is that Ratri, Naktam Charadhyaha. And in that Ratri, in that Avidya, who is this Naktan Charadhyaha? Is the Jeeva that dwells in these dark alleys. The one who is readily waiting that even by mistake, if that Jeeva turns towards God, utters the prayer by mistake, by mistake. And that is why in our Purana, we have been often given the stories of even the uh, Gajendra. Uh, for so many days at length, he was fighting and fighting and fighting. Out of utter frustration, because he was the king. And all those who followed him had already you know, abandoned him ran away, nobody came to his rescue. Out of sheer frustration, he cries out loud, Narayana. And there comes Bhagawan instantly, as if he was just waiting for that call. Even by mistake, we take his name with that intensity. He comes down to save this Jeeva. And when he does come, what does he do? Asimadhyaha. Asimadhyaha. He comes in with the sword of knowledge to cut away all that which binds this jiva. And we will be surprised that that which binds us to limitations is not big, big things. They are all small, small little strings of attachment, but they are so huge in number that it almost immobilizes us from any movement. Little, 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 little knots. And that only reminds me of Gulliver's travels. And when he wakes up first time, he sees that you know, little, little creatures are going around him. He says, okay, little ones, I can always, you know, break myself away. He tries pulling hard. With all his strength, he is not able to, with all his might, he is not able to pull himself out. Why there are so little strings, but there are so many of them. That is how is the jiva. Little, little silly things that we keep getting attached to. We do not allow the life to flow in its way. We want it to be in the flow of what I can design it to be. So that is where comes the problem. And we start developing these little, little attachments. 
and these little little attachments can really weigh us down interact with everything being independent of everything that you are interacting with there's nothing wrong in this world and it interaction with it but with a sense of independence that you are not craving for its presence or absence world of things world of beings world of opportunities world of experiences world of time world of space all these put together but here we are you know, somebody in the morning is uh, what happened i didn't get my cup of coffee without that cup of coffee i don't get you know and rightfully so they use the word kick start the day it's almost like the coffee kicks them whips them into action little little habits little little th- attachments that we hold and they have to be in that specific order it can mess us up royally so this jeeva in the darkness of avidya naktan charadhya who is constantly jumping out prakranta naam to snatch an opportunity snatch an opportunity in this world to make sure that there is something that can fulfill something that can bring in a betterment of experience but in all these efforts constantly keeps pushing himself again and again into further darkness it is only when i went into a dark room have you ever been to a dark room photography dark room it is those days when they had the Uh, film rolls and uh, they would develop them in the dark room and that is when i understood that what we say as dark is not actually dark even in at home there is some kind of ambiance something somewhere hitting in and with today's world wherein there are so many gadgets charging here and there and their little led also makes such a bright light i went into this dark room to understand that this is what darkness actually means however you want to stare through you can absolutely see nothing that's when the actual term when they use dark darkness of the darkest that is the dark so agnyana is like that dark room from which there can be no clarity but even by mistake if they end up taking the name of the lord and that is why <clears throat> the lord so compassionate he says that even if you come and spend your last moments kashi marata mukti karata kahata aur leta ram naam so even that kashi kshetra is so powerful that even you should spend your last moments there is more than sufficient that he bestows upon them unlimited krupa unlimited grace to take them away from this bondages the little effort from our side with that intensity when we take that names name of that lord <coughs> he says readily waiting 
to snatch that jiva from its own jivatva into that unlimited presence and being. Asimadhyaha naktancharadhyaha prakuntanam pataye namaha. Continuing. Repeat after me. <clears throat> Nama Ushni Shine <coughs> Giri Charaya <coughs> Kuluncanam <coughs> Pataye Namo. So Nama. Salutations again. Ushni Shine. Ushni Shine. Ushni Sha is like a, 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 a turban, a cloth turban. You know, in the olden days, uh, those who were of a, a royal uh, lineage or those who had, those who were the Samanta, Samanta, those who were. Um, with power, authority or uh, great wealth. So, they used to have different kinds of turbans. See, the ordinary peasant would probably have the, uh, the towel or something that he would have on his shoulder. When the heat gets really strong, he would take it out and tie it on his head. As the status increases, the finer details of that turban start. So, Ushnishina is, uh, Ushnishi is like of a royal nature turban. Ushnishine, the one who wears uh, a royal turban. Giricharaya, salutations to the one who wanders in the Girichara, the one who wanders in the mountains. Kulunchanam, Kulunchanam of those who extort, wrongfully so, wealth, land, houses, etc. Pataye Namaha, to the Lord of all of these, my salutations. Poor Lord, in order to reach out to scores of devotees, the kinds of things that he has to do to reach out to that particular devotee is more than amazing. And as going through each mantra, I just feel may that Lord not uh, take any of these when coming to rescue me. Uh, may it be the smoothest, but as they say, life is stranger than fiction and we do not know what we have in stock because of what we have done in the past and how it will take us by surprise. So, these meanings here, the salutations to the one who has turban, who wanders in the hill and who extorts others property. <clears throat> now, Ushnishina, the one who carries himself in that town or in that village as a uh, as a gentleman, and then fools the people around, and finally robs them of their belongings. In today's world, we can call them as the uh, gentleman thief who wear uh, a two-piece suit, probably a tuxedo. Well, that takes it to a totally different level now that you mention it. <coughs> this is Wall Street or the lobbyists or uh, <clears throat> so, 
Ushni Shina, the one who has uh, and who carries himself as a, a very prominent person just by the external looks. And if you have seen the movies or read the stories of people like, you know, what was that? Catch me if you can. Have you read that story? When that fellow by, by some chance of opportunity gets to wear a pilot's attire. In those days, this is in 60s, there was no regulation of ID cards and other things. He just said, I am the co-pilot and then he started flying. Before he, you know, official people caught up to him, he had already flown about 6, 7000 miles as a, <coughs> a pilot and they were paying him also. And then he went across into various fields purely by fooling others with his gentlemanly behavior. This is one meaning of Ushnishina. The second meaning of Ushnishina can also mean somebody who has, uh, who comes as an uh, officer of some important authority and uh, probably, you know, expects some kind of uh, favors, bribe and other things. So, such one also can be called as the Ushni Shina. You know, going into the deeper meaning of Ushni Shina. <coughs> it is that Lord who having nothing to do with anything, the attributes, Guna, because he is Nirguna. For the sake of that devotee, he comes assuming various gunas, various attributes to become the saguna sakara murti. And then through the processes of dhyana and ityadi, what does he do? He snatches away all the gunas of the devotee to finally usher him to that nirguna sthira sthiti, to that attributeless stage. And going through life, what kinds of incidents trigger this devotion, nobody knows. Like in Tulsi Das's life, what was it that triggered devotion? A firm reprimand from his wife, a scolding from his wife ignited his devotion. I'm, don't, you don't need to answer my question, it is not a question. I am giving you the disclaimer. How many times the spouse must have scolded. Did it ignite any kind of devotion? <laughs> there is some motion, <laughs> some emotion. And look at this Tulsi Das. And his wife also, even in her reprimand, was of a sattvic nature. She says, you are so attached with me that you cannot spare yourself one night away from me. If you had this sense of attachment to the Lord, your Rama would have already given you darshan. And sitting there in his in-law's house where he had broken into just to meet his wife, he sits there. All that intensity to see her or longing for her is put aside. And he is like thinking, Pate ki baat hai. True. What you said is true. And then he gets up. He came in through the roof. And he sneaked in through the roof. And now he walks out of the room, out of the house, through the main door. 
never to come back again. And directly to Chitrakoot, which is where he has the darshan of the Lord. So he comes in the form of some saguna, inspires at that moment to trigger the devotion. inspires that devotee it's not like you know one formula fits all each devotee and the devotee's circumstances are different tukaram and eknath one's wife was extremely devoted the other fellow's wife was constantly harassing him and both were a trigger points for extreme devotion in each one's life. In the Bhagavata, in the beginning, there is the story of Dhunduli, Dhundukari. So, Dhunduli's husband, <coughs> he is so grief stricken. I don't know what is life without having a child. So the sannyasi says that I agree that son or your child is the one who saves you from the eternal naraka. Pum nama naraka trayate iti putraha. I agree. But then what if that putra pum nama narakam atraiva darshayate iti? <laughs> Ends up being the one who shows that pum nama naraka here itself. It's all good for you to say standing there, but I going through this misery, I alone can understand. And then his son is born with the blessings of that Mahatma, the son is born. And there is a twist in that story, it is actually not his son, but his wife's sister's son. And there is this uh, weird thing happening that there is a child born of a cow who was named as Gokarna. And that Gokarna gives knowledge to his father and that becomes that inspiring moment in his life to change. So, Ushni Ishina, that prominent person who comes into our life triggering that which is required to bring that amazing devotion and depth of devotion to that Saguna Sakara in our life. It can come from any format. Once the devotee said, goes to the Lord and after he dies, he said, Lord, you never came, me, came into my life as inspiration. I came into your life as your child. I came into your life as your spouse. I came into your life as your in-laws. I came into your life in these various forms. Every point to trigger that inspiration. But it was, I was only left with perspiration, but you never seemed to recognize any one of those moments. And then we have the audacity to ask, where is the grace of the Lord? It's everywhere. Provided we are ready to appreciate it, provided we are ready to open our eyes. We keep closing our eyes and expect that the Lord does miracles. And when there is light outside and you are closing your eyes, you are refusing to open your eyes, what is the best treatment at that time? Any treatment which takes that person to open the eyes. Open. 
as the next best throw some cold water on the face okay now you open your eyes whatever it takes ushni shina that prominent one who comes in a saguna sakara form to trigger us all the way to that sthira sthiti of nirguna nirakara ushni shine <coughs> there is also that he takes various other forms to come and trigger that devotion into that devotee like in arjuna's life he came, he comes into the form of kirata and challenging challenges him on a duel fights and defeats that arjuna and then finally bestows him with that pashupatastra or sometimes he takes the form of indra or yama or various such forms to kindle that devotion in the heart of the devotee now <coughs> ushneeshina girichara giricharaya those who dwell deep in the mountains and make a living out of selling all the precious wood and the various precious things of that a mountainous forest area to make a living that which they don't have an authority on but they uh, stealthily steal all this uh, probably the recent most example that can be given is the sandalwood thief you all know that uska naam kya tha ha irappan mucho wala such one are called the giricharaya now here <coughs> there is a very deep significant meaning that here the giri that is being talked about is the giri of sahasrara so if you look at the entire meru the 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 topmost point is like a mountain and that is the sahasrara now the sadhaka puts in tremendous effort to reach having reached there that mountain of sahasrara is filled with various I mean, densely like a forest filled with lots of siddhi enticing ones very attractive ones and it's very easy to get lost into those something like <clears throat> you can see somebody and you can read their thoughts why would you want to read somebody's thoughts just to get a kick out of it as gurudev put it like we, that was my introduction to gurudev we were sitting in a parking lot listening to gurudev and our discussion was such mahatmas have this power to read anybody's mind and suddenly gurudev's talk stops and he is laughing in his unique style and then he says many of you my friends sitting here think that i can read your mind that was like mind blowing we were just discussing that and here he is in, a, in the other side on the stage the blaring uh, pa system and there is no way that he would have heard us speak sometimes in the gathering is such small one you are whispering to each other you can hear it sometimes maybe we'll read the lips and find what right it can happen like this 20000 people with so much of sound there's no way he would have heard it many of you my friends think that i can read your minds he could have stopped there and then he says the punchline was very beautiful 
why would I be interested in your trash? <laughs> Similar thing with <coughs> Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. You know, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa was one day taking you know, bath in Ganga Ghat in Dakshineshwar. And there is this fellow who comes and says, Kyo Babu, do you remember me? Like, you know, do you remember me, sir? He said, yes, yes. It's been almost like 14, 15 years you left me here and uh, how have you been? And other things. So he says, do you know I can walk on waters? He says, uh, what do you mean? So he walks on Ganga and comes back. So he is very proud about his accomplishment. And so Ramakrishna Varamsa looks at him and he says, How many years did you spend for this? He says, 14 years. He says, Throw a penny to that boatman and he will take you across effortlessly. And for that you wasted 14 years? You could have spent this effectively and efficiently in something else better. Now what have you achieved by walking on waters? Various siddhis. Suddenly you can create something, change energy into matter. When the matter it does, itself does not matter, how does it matter if you can change energy into matter? Strange things, you know, people, I have said this many times, people come and say, put your hands on my head. I say, why? No, no, put, put. I said, why? The positive energy from, will, uh, from you will come and I will feel the vibration. I will feel some peace within. Said, if at all that were true. I would put both my hands, both my legs on my own head. Why on your head? It's very easy to get lost in these unnecessary shenanigans of Siddhis. Oh, I think and it happens. By mistake, some coincidence. No, Swamiji, I have got the Satyavak Siddhi. I read it on internet that it can happen. This internet these days. If you don't know how to use it, it will chew you live. So, this Maharanya is the Siddhi around the, and without realizing. These seekers get trapped in it. Giri Charaya. And he then comes as that friendly reminder, friendly guide to take us all the way to that Sahasrara without getting lost in those Siddhis. In fact, many a compassionate masters put a ring of, like the horse has the, what do you call them? Blinds. They call blinkers? Okay. The blinkers. So, the guru puts, the masters put that those blinkers on the student that you do not ever get into such realms, not get lost. So, that you stay steadfast on that path and not get distracted by these things en route. To such Giri Charaya, our salutations and prostrations. <coughs> Kuluncha Kum Bhumim Lunchayati Apaharati Iti Kuluncha. Kuluncha means those who, uh, these are the people who snatch our property, land, homes, 
yeah, you can call them collectors. That's what they call them. Yeah. When it gets into foreclosures, <laughs> You know, in those days, there were these zamindars or the tahsildars or you know such people who would make sure that they'll give you some you know credit, but against some property, and they'll have um, what do you call them interest, compound interest, and there are on two more such levels. It in English. Is there something more than compound? So, in those days, they used to have uh, four layers of interest that the fellow who has taken that would never be able to pay back. And then they had to let go of their property, their house, their uh, you know, cattle. Huh, and the principle still remains unmoving. That not just him, not just his wife, his entire family for generations end up being slaves. No, bonded labor is totally different. Therefore, it continues generations together. Now, such people are called Kuluncha. Kuluncha naam pataye namaha. Now, <coughs> salutations to the Lord. Here, it is much more of a straight meaning. Salutations to that Lord who comes in the form of these Tasildars, Zamindars and those who usurp our uh, property, wealth and uh, various assets, thus thereby promising the devotee of detachment, promising the devotee of uh, the titiksha required of having lost all these things. Because the mysterious are the ways of the Lord. I have told you this story also, right? Krishna and Arjuna go, this is after the war, goes to a poor Brahmin's house and he blesses him to lose the existing cow that he is having. He goes to a wealthy man and he says, may you prosper with more and more wealth. And Arjuna says, Bhagwan, you should have been the president of America. You are acting like a capitalist, that the rich become richer and the poor become poorer. What kind of justice is this in your system? He says, that Brahmin had everything else aligned. The only thing that he was attached to was that cow. Letting go of his attachment to that cow, he is now merged in that intoxicated devotion unto that divine. Whereas this fellow, the other businessman, he is still with such a gross mind that he cannot think of divinity and it has to be, uh, his mind has to be grossed out with this wealth and various assets that he gets disgusted of it and leaves it. Therefore, I blessed him with having more of it. Essentially, we have it or not have it. If we are turning ourselves to be that devotee, he makes the call at the right time and therefore he is called Kulunchanam Pataye Namaha. There is this famous story of a famous Shivacharya of South, uh, Nasundara Murti. So, in his life, the Lord comes as uh, a zamindar and he issues a uh, what do you call fake uh, land property and other things and snatches it away from him. And in that intensity of uh, frustration, he turns towards the Lord to become one of the greatest devotees of the Lord. There are various such instances that if we do not, if we are not prepared to let go consciously, 
he will have to take poor fellow has to come in these forms. So why are there these many people who are thugs and thieves and others? Not because it is their prarabdha. It is because we have less of detachment. Right? To such kulunchanam pataye, my salutations again and again. We will continue further tomorrow. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Gurubhyo Namaha Harihi Om